If everybody will take their seat, please, we'll get started. Hey, good morning. My name is Mark Jacobs, and I'm the Houston Market President for Regions Bank, and I want to welcome you here and thank you for being here. This is a fantastic turnout, so give yourself a round of applause. Hopefully that woke everybody up. So appreciate you being here early at the Houston Club. Beautiful venue. Thank you to the staff here for the great job you all do. Real excited about what we're going to talk about today, and that's small business with our partnership with ICIC and the program that we're going to be delivering here this summer called ICCC. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but we want to be respectful of the mayor's time and uh, really appreciate Mayor Turner being here. Uh, mayor Turner has been a great partner here for what we're trying to do in the city uh, with complete communities. So mayor, thank you for letting us be involved with complete communities. And we had that kick off a month ago, so I won't give that speech again. But uh, real excited about complete communities and what you're doing to transform our city and, and lower the income gap. So very, very important to what we're doing. But uh, let me introduce the mayor. Real excited to hear you speak today. Uh, mayor Turner is a very, very impressive man. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about him because I think everybody knows Mayor Turner. Um, but, you know, in his second term, which I think this is the last term he can serve, but it's four more years. So that's fantastic. And we're really excited about that. <laughs> Grew up in Acres Homes, um, went to the University of Houston, and then went to Harvard Law School, which fits really well with our partnership with ICIC out of Boston. So we have a lot of uh, individuals from Harvard who will be here delivering the program this summer. So that's very impressive. 27 years in the legislature representing our great city, soon to be the third largest city in America. Sorry, Chicago. And just real excited about uh, his fit with small business and, and what, what he does to advance small business in this city, and that's just so important. But the most important thing about Mayor Turner is the fact that he still lives in Acres Homes. So even though he went to Harvard and has a great law degree and spent years with Vincent and Elkins, which is a great law firm here in town, spent time in the legislature, he remembers the city, he remembers Acres Homes, and he's part of it every day. And so not only does he talk it, but he walks it. So with that, Mayor, I'd like to welcome you up, and I'd also like to present you with something, and then I'll turn it over to you. But thank you so much. So, Mayor, this is our button. Uh, it says, we love small business and has the ICIC logo on there, and we hope you'll wear this today. And thank you so much for being here. I Thanks, really appreciate Mark. you. Thank you very, very much. Look, let me, let me, let me thank Mark and... And I am gonna put it on. I'm gonna wear it all. I'm gonna wear it all day, you know. <laughs> and I, <laughs> look, I, I do want to. Mark has been very gracious in his comments with regard uh, regarding myself. But uh, I want to. I want to thank Regions Bank and Mark Jacobs and so many others for just being for embracing complete communities. That initiative um, of all of the things that we're doing. Uh, this uh, Complete Communities is like the signature uh, initiative for me. I don't call it a program because, you know, people get all caught up on programs. I will say that it's a, it's a strategy to uplift every community in our neighborhood. And, uh, and it doesn't work without, without meaningful partners. And so uh, Regions Bank has just been a terrific partner and has embraced it. And for that, I want to say thank you. Please give it up to Mark and Regions Bank. <laughs> Let me make one correction, though. Uh, instead of Vincent and Elkins, Fulbright and Jaworski. I don't want anybody at Foot and Fulbright and Jaworski uh, to be up to be upset with me. Uh, but uh, I'm an alumni of Fulbright or uh, Jaworski, which is now Norton Rose. Um, and look uh, to all of you in this room, and and there are some incredible, incredible partners uh, with the city of Houston. Um, that's in this room, and I know Shannon Bugs, who is the director of Complete Communities, excited, and, 
and Marsha Murray, who is here of our Office of Business Opportunity, and, and we're talking about small businesses and MWBEs, um, and this is uh, Marsha, and they're having their Champions of Victory celebration this evening and giving out a number of awards to small businesses at the Georgia Brown, so we're excited about that. Um, this is today's emphasis, quite frankly, is on, is on business, entrepreneurship. Um, and you can't build up communities and neighborhoods without it. Um, I will certainly want to acknowledge, and, and I'm going to get in trouble when I start doing this, um, but, um, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not on the ballot again. Uh, let me, um, uh, uh, Judson, let me just acknowledge Judson Robinson uh, over the Houston area Urban League. Uh, Judson, thank you. The National Urban League uh, is returning to Houston uh, this, this summer in August, and we're looking forward to having 15 to 20,000. Um, we're thinking it's going to be the largest Urban League uh, convention uh, in their history, so we're certainly planning accordingly, so we look forward to working with you, Justin. And, and uh, Sonny Messiah Giles is back there with the Houston Defender. And so you can't have a meeting of this kind without having good, effective coverage. So, uh, Sonny, thank you. Sonny, come on. You know, uh, thank you so very, very much. Look, let me, let me put these on. It's not that I need them, but, um, <laughs> but my eyes uh, are not functioning as well this morning. So uh, later on today, hopefully it'll get better. But Houston is a world-class city where community members take pride in their homes and their businesses. And currently, Houston is ranked uh, the most diverse city in the United States uh, based on markets of, markers of social, economic, cultural, economic, household, and religious diversity. Uh, the city's business landscape is promising uh, thanks to the commitment of partners like Regents Bank that are committed to leveling the playing field for entrepreneurs and providing access to world-class curriculums to help small businesses scale with an emphasis on entrepreneurs and underserved communities. And that's why this kickoff breakfast with ICIC is, is so important. And because of you and people in this room and others and similar businesses focused programs, Houston is ranked number one uh, in the United States for minority, for minority entrepreneurs, and number four for women entrepreneurs. Um, and many people didn't know that, but when it comes to minority entrepreneurs, Houston is ranked number one. When it comes to women, we are ranked number four. But the runway is still very, very long, because uh, in growing up, and I know people who have been in this city for a while can attest, um, there were a number of businesses, small businesses, in communities that were underserved. Uh, if you went down a Darling or a Lyons or a Jensen or West Montgomery or Little York years ago, uh, they would be lined up with small businesses, hiring people. Uh, many of those businesses, and I would say even most of them, are no longer, are no longer there. And as they have disap disappeared, gone away, those communities have been adversely impacted. And the question is, how can, we, how can we rebuild that? How can we rebuild that? Because you can't lift up underserved and under-resourced communities without businesses being in those communities, uh, hiring people in those communities. Uh, and so we have to find ways to reignite that entrepreneurial spirit and encourage people to venture out and or encourage businesses that are there, that are there to expand. Our city is on trend with the rise of women and minorities starting businesses at a significantly higher rate than white males. However, just like most cities witnessing this boom, these new business owners face a disproportionate number of barriers to fully participate in the marketplace. And Houston businesses from underserved communities are denied loans at three times the rate of non-minority owned firms. But we must increase access to business planning services, management training, and financial counseling that will result in greater access to, to capital to ensure that business owners have the planning tools and financial education to win contracts and grow their business. And I know Marsha can attest, we have about 3,800 certified businesses in the city of Houston. 40% uh, of them are for uh, African-American businesses alone. But it's not just about 
putting a sign up and say I'm in business. It's about being viable, having the capacity, uh, knowing how to access opportunities that exist, that are existing in our city. And there are a number of opportunities that are in our city, and, there, and the opportunities are coming every day. But if you're not in a position to access, uh, to be a part of it, then you kind of miss out uh, as we move forward. We must use targeted policy and programming to create clear pathways to entrepreneurship, develop more resources to help new businesses owners navigate the market, and expand our provision of capacity building and support services to ensure that businesses thrive. If we can work collectively to remove these barriers, we stand to experience a surge in wealth creation and improve economic mobility for small business owners and their families. Hence, the importance of the initiative for a competitive inner city ICRC. During this administration, the city of Houston has awarded over $7 billion in construction, professional services, and goods and services contract. Almost $2 billion of that was awarded to certified minority women-owned and small business enterprises. And we are working to increase that amount even more. And this is how we build complete communities, by empowering residents to create futures of their own making and for them to be able to provide for their families. My Complete Communities Initiative is just one way that the city stands with business owners that maintain, expand, and start businesses in economically distressed neighborhoods. There are opportunity zones within Houston. In fact, there are 99 that we have designated where federal tax incentives can encourage investments in economically depressed neighborhoods. We appreciate Regents Bank for bringing ICC to our city in efforts to empower Houston entre entrepreneurs in urban and underserved areas through greater access to education and business training. In addition to training and education, there, this is also about accessibility to resources that can help Houstonians, uh, help Houston entrepreneurs grow their companies and create more job opportunities, the multiplier effect. Businesses create jobs, and jobs create opportunities for individuals and families, which can uplift all communities and hence provide complete communities. But you don't do it just with services alone. It's not just about services. It's about business opportunities. And the city of Houston, you know, we're not, we, the government is not going to create these jobs. We're going to create a few. Just like our Higher Houston Youth Program, 450. Last year, we got up to, for last summer, 11,400. But 450 came from the city of Houston. The remaining 11,000 came from the private sector. And the goal for this summer is 20,000. 450 will come from the city of Houston. The remaining 15,000 will come from the private sector. And in order to make sure that all communities are lifted up, we have to have viable, dynamic businesses in every segment of our city, and especially in areas that have been underserved and under-resourced for a long time. And if we don't establish those businesses, thriving businesses, in these communities, in these neighborhoods, in these areas that we have targeted at complete communities, then we are going to miss the mark. And it has to be intentional. And there has to be a coherent plan uh, in order to make that happen. If we do that, then we'll have a safer city. And we'll have a city that provides opportunities for all of our kids. And then lastly, I'll close with this anecdotal story. When I grew up in Acres Home, still live in Acres Home, there was a guy who was a business owner, George Smith. George Smith owned a piping company. And George Smith lived in the same neighborhood in which I was born and reared, Garden City Park. And as a kid, I really didn't know what George Smith did. I went to school with his, with his kids, but I didn't know what he did. Only thing I knew is that seeing that his house was always well maintained and kept. And he drove the finest cars. 
And every time I saw him, he, was, he had on a suit and a tie. And I just looked at him and admired him, you know, right there in the neighborhood. Every time I saw him. And then he contributed to everything we, want, we needed in, in the community. He was an owner of his own piping company. And he was very successful. And he lived right there in the neighborhood. And so the importance of establishing entrepreneurs who are successful, whose businesses are expanding, is that they can provide job opportunities for people who also live in the same neighborhood like Mr. Smith did. And they can also be that motivator to encourage kids that are coming up who have no idea what they want to be, but they look at these individuals, these role models, and they say, that's what I want to be as well. And they provide that added hope for a lot of kids who are coming from families where they may not have that entrepreneur right there in their families. And when we do that, then we uplift all communities. And it's not about just making a donation or giving a contribution or writing a check. When we create entrepreneurship, we're providing opportunities where people can go to work, own, work hard, earn their own paycheck, and take care of their families, and take pride in what they do. But it starts with taking these individuals, people with ideas, and then having these businesses, and then expanding the capacity. So let me thank you for what you do. I think this is a significant step in building a complete community uh, within the city of Houston. Thank you so very, very much. And now I have the distinct pleasure of, uh, of bringing up the head of ICC, Steve Grossman. Steve. You know, neither Mark nor I need to say too much after that. Uh, this is a mayor who just doesn't talk the talk. This is a mayor who in his first term and in his second term, we're all thrilled that he has another term coming up, has actually done in the neighborhoods, in the under-resourced and underserved communities of this great city, everything that he talked about. When mayors partner with ICIC to create cohorts of small businesses, to create sustainable small business ecosystems, cities flourish. We just went through a strategic plan and inclusive economic prosperity is our mission. But if you think about what is the biggest challenge we face as a country, as a society, some people would say climate change. I say, ICIC says that the biggest challenge we face is narrowing the racial wealth gap in America. We need to do that and work on that every single day. And this mayor has indicated that he will put the full resources of the community, his economic development team, with us. And we will be recruiting a cohort. Remember a date, because you're going to be all asked to help out. June 17th is the day. We'll be having our inaugural cohort. Mark Jacobs has already said, I don't care how many cohorts Regents has sponsored the nine cohorts since 2014 when we first came to Memphis. We are going to have the most successful cohort Regents has ever sponsored right here in the city of Houston, and it's going to be largely because the mayor and every one of you did your part to make sure that we created small businesses, successful, growing, getting what we call the five C's, capacity building, coaching, capital, connections, and ultimately contracts. So, Mayor, thank you. We know you've got a very busy day in front of you, and we thank you. So, every one of you has in front of you one of these little buttons. Many of them say, we love small business. Some of them say, proud business owner. Uh, we hope you'll wear one if you don't happen to be a business owner, but we all love small business. Take it with you. Give it to somebody if you're not going to wear it, but make sure you wear it today. Let's make today one of the 366 days this year, we have leap year this year, when small businesses are focused because that is what empowers and lifts people up and leaves no one behind. So Mayor, thank you so much for your leadership. And that's what this is all about, leadership.
I'm going to just advance that one just so you get a sense of the program here. Um, you know, some people come to Houston and they go to an art museum or some one of the tourist attractions, but when I come to Houston, my first stop is Three Brothers Bakery. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've been to Three Brothers Bakery at least once. Well, yesterday, I and my colleagues, Diego Portillo Mazal, Natalie Gould, Derek Sexton, I'll introduce them in a couple of minutes, went right over to Three Brothers. And Janice and Bobby Jukka rolled out the red carpet. If you've ever had lunch and your lunch consisted of bread pudding, red velvet cake, king cake, chocolate croissant, arugula, artisanal sourdough bread, and I could give you three or four more. And then we had to go to Carabas last night and eat ossobuco, steak, cannoli, salad, and antipasto. We rolled into the Houston club this morning with big smiles on our face. <laughs> so thank you, Janice and Bobby. And Janice is going to be speaking a little bit later. She is our, one of our distinguished uh, alumni of this program, of many programs that we run. But thank you for your hospitality yesterday. If you haven't been to Three Brothers lately, get your butts over there, because it's a pretty darn good place. Um, as the mayor said, I'm CEO of ICIC. And you've heard ICIC, and you've heard ICCC, and you've heard a lot of the alphabet soup of acronyms here. So let me give you a quick explanation. How did all this happen? So it's 1993, shortly after the LA uprising. We all know what happened in LA in 1992. And a student of Dr. Porter's, Michael Porter's, Willie Woods, knocks on the door and says, Dr. Porter, you're the global guru of strategy and competitiveness. When are you going to turn your attention to the inner cities of this country that are burning up and that people have written off? He said, great idea, Willie. Let's do it together. Six months they studied it and they put a plan together. And in 1994 they created ICIC, the Initiative for a Competitive Inner City. We started as a research organization to study the 328 inner cities in America that have high levels of poverty, high levels of unemployment, but plenty of opportunity. Porter wrote a seminal paper called The Competitive Advantages of Inner Cities. And people scratched their heads and said, Dr. Porter, are you OK? Inner cities have competitive advantages? He said, yeah. Density of population, lots of purchasing power, near transportation hubs. We've got to revitalize them. And what's going to do it? Sustainable small business ecosystems. Empower small business owners, and you will empower a city and its neighborhoods, and they will flourish. And that's exactly what has happened. Shortly thereafter, we realized that thought leadership was not sufficient. You can't just study an issue. You've got to actually deliver the goods. So we've created a series of what we call urban business initiatives over the past 25 years, of which inner city capital connections is the one we're going to talk about here this morning. Started in 2005. Almost 4,000 small businesses have been through the program. There's a deck here. There are 27 slides in the deck. Don't get scared. We're not going through 27 slides this morning. But I promise you that my colleagues, Natalie Gould and Derek Sexton, will be sending you the entire deck of slides in an email afterwards. And you can look at them and study them and see just what we've accomplished together. What we've accomplished nationally, what we've accomplished here in Texas, because we've been in Texas four times over the years, mostly in Dallas, and until the Houstonian community said, got to be here in Houston. This is the year. Mark Jacobs said, let's bring it here. In fact, last May, we had an alumni event. Janice Strucker put it together. We had 90 people in that session. We turned and looked at each other. Mark said, we're bringing this program to Houston in 2020 to really have an impact on this community. Today, ICIC is made up of 41 professionals. We're located in Boston. We do uh, work all over the country. This year, we'll be in about 16 cities. That's grown continually over the years. Regions Bank has been an extraordinary partner. And I'd like to show you exactly what that extraordinary partnership has done. If I can go to the right slide, which is number 14. That's the impact Regions has had. Grayson Hall, who was the chairman and CEO of Regions Bank in 2014, working with Michael Porter, who was a key strategic advisor to Regions, got together and we said, Regions' mission, vision, and values is all about lifting people up and leaving no one behind. 
They're all about the concept of shared value. So if you look at that slide, you'll see it all. Nine cohorts starting in Memphis in 2014, and it's been in Birmingham and St. Louis and Tampa Bay and Atlanta, and now here in Houston. Nine cohorts, 621 businesses, and you can see the impact. We're all data-driven people. Our businesses are run by looking at data. Are we performing? Are we having impact? And here you see the impact. 71% of the companies that have been through the program are minority-owned. Almost 50% are women-owned. Almost a quarter of a billion dollars of capital has been raised. Average growth rate of the businesses that have been through, 142%. That's top-line revenue growth. And finally, over 1,700 jobs have been created. And those are the ones we can document. We survey every company every year, the ones who don't respond. We don't speculate as to what they might have done. This is what people have responded, and only about 40% of the people actually respond. So to the leadership of Regions Bank in Birmingham, Alabama, to Mark Jacobs, and to your colleagues here in the room, and I know you'll acknowledge them in a little bit when you come up and give some remarks about Regions. We cannot thank you enough. We cannot express our gratitude. This is the seventh year we've been together, building these relationships throughout your footprint. And I know we have lots of plans on the drawing board for other communities in different parts of the country. This is who Regions is. This is what they stand for. This is the leadership they provide. They do well. They do good. They invest in communities for sustainable growth. So I'm grateful and I want to thank Regions Bank for their leadership over these last seven years, culminating with this morning's breakfast. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to the team. But we only do our work successfully because we build relationships. A great Nobel Prize winning author, Rabindranath Tagore, once said that all life is relationship. So this is about relationships. And it's about partnerships, it's about you, each one of you, reaching out and identifying one or three or five small businesses that can benefit from this program. We don't work with startups. We work with small businesses that are beyond the proof of concept stage, but they're stuck. Nobody ever helped them develop a strategy. They need a marketing plan. They need a plan to succeed and to have a succession when a man or a woman have owned a business for 40 years and wants to provide that business and turn it over to a daughter or a son, they need to know about succession planning. These are all the issues that small business owners deal with. Marketing, finance, team building, leadership, and leadership effectiveness. And the program is free of charge. We don't charge anything to the small business owners. And that, in large measure, because of the generosity of our sponsors Regions Bank. I also want to recognize and acknowledge some of our partners here in the room who have played such an enormously important role. I am acknowledged already the City of Houston. When mayors help, this program works. I want to acknowledge the leadership of the Chevron Corporation, and I want to specifically uh, introduce, you all know him, many of you, those who don't know him, you should know, Dave Feldman, who is Director of Diversity for the Chevron Corporation. Dave, please stand. Chevron Corporation is our longest serving national sustaining partner. For 60% of our life as an organization, 25 years, they've been with us. They sponsor our national conference and they sponsor a program called the Inner City 100. What is the Inner City 100? The Inner City 100 is a program that honors and recognizes the 100 fastest growing inner city businesses in America every year. 22nd year. We honor these companies based on two factors. We've actually changed our criteria a little bit this year. How fast did you grow your revenue? And how many jobs did you create? And every year an award is presented by the leadership of the Shepherd Corporation at our national conference, which will be in Los Angeles this year on November 19th. And I'm proud to thank and to acknowledge the Shepherd Corporation for their leadership of the Inner City 100. I'm also proud to let you know that Janice Jucker and Bobby Jucker, the Three Brothers Bakery, have won the Inner City 100 Award twice, and yesterday when we were at the bakery, I said, Janice, I want your awards, I'm gonna bring them and show them to people because <laughs> there are Houston-based businesses. <laughs> because there 
are Houston businesses that need to be nominated for the Inner City 100 Award. And in your packet and in your slides, there's information about the Inner City 100 criteria, et cetera, and how you can nominate. You don't have to write any notes down. There'll be plenty of material sent to you. Um, you won't lack for information about how to get this done and how to nominate. I spent the evening last night with a new friend. His name is Gordon Russell. Now, Gordon's from Dallas, but his law firm, Kane Russell Coleman Logan, has a strong presence both in Dallas and here in Houston. Ninety lawyers, growing presence here. Two of his colleagues are here with him this morning. And Gordon, what I learned from you last night is that endless curiosity is the key to success over a lifetime of leadership. But it's also about how do you reinvest in the communities in which you work and do business to create communities that work for everyone. So to Kane Russell, to you, Gordon, to your colleagues who are here this morning, thank you for your generous support of this program. You have helped by partnering with Regents Bank with Mark to make this possible. A round of applause, please, for Kane Russell Coleman Logan. Thank you, Gordon. I don't know that our colleagues uh, from Goldman Sachs are here, uh, but there's another program that we run with a national selection outreach partner for a program called uh, 10,000 Small Businesses. It was started by Goldman Sachs in 2009. It's been in existence for 10 years. More than 9,000 small businesses have been through that program. We are proud to work on that program. Um, so I'm going to acknowledge, even though I don't know that they're here, Christy Smith and Liz Lara Carreno for the leadership. Uh, many of you know this program, the 10,000 Small Businesses Program. Many of you have nominated for the program. Uh, these programs work in concert together. We're all about complementary efforts. We're not about being competitive. If we work in a collegial and collaborative way to build the small business sector of the economy here, everybody wins and everybody succeeds. That's what Regents is about. That's what we're all about, that's what you're all about, and that's why we're all here today. I want to uh, uh, also acknowledge, I know Janice is going to be up here in just a few minutes uh, to speak and to tell you about her experiences with this program. She, by the way, is also a graduate of the 10,000 Small Businesses Program and of the ICCC program and twice an inner city 100 winner. She won the trifecta. That's how it, that, that's how it really goes. And by the way, it's a woman-owned business, a certified woman-owned business which is a terrific thing, but I want to acknowledge her life partner, Bobby Joker. Bobby, can you please stand? I want everybody to know Bobby as well. And while I get to stand up here and represent ICIC and tell you a little bit of the program, and you're going to meet my colleague, Diego portillo Mazal a little bit later, I want to thank the leader of this program, the person who runs the Inner City Capital Connections Program, You'll see him in just a few minutes, Diego Portillo Mazal, as well as his two colleagues who are standing in the doorway. Natalie, just come out of the doorway so everybody can see you. <laughs> Natalie Gould and Derek Sexton, uh, they are the people you will be working with on a daily, weekly basis. They will be sending you emails, communicating with you. Every small business will hear from them personally. That's how we do this to make sure that each company is ready. But I want to thank my colleagues publicly for the leadership they demonstrate every single day. And with that, um, I'm going to ask Mark Jacobs to come back up here. Um, I had prepared about 10 minutes of remarks from, uh, about Mark. Mark said, please shorten it a little bit. So I'll just tell you that Mark has been the market president, the Houston market president of, of, of this market. Uh, he's been with the bank for about eight years. He's a Fort Worth native. He's a UT graduate. He's a wonderful friend, a dear partner. And he will uh, let you know a little bit more about the program and a little bit more about how we are going to succeed in creating the most successful cohort we've ever had in the 15-year history of the Inner City Capital Connections Program right here in Houston on June 17th. Mark Jacobs. Thank you. Wow, Steve, that, that was outstanding. And again, I want to thank everybody that's here. Uh, you said something that really rang home and that you were talking about inclusion you were talking about, you know, we're all one family. And I assure you that everybody in this room is connected and you talked about connectivity. And so um, you're gonna see it firsthand. I mean, we're all family here. We're proud to be Houstonians, we're proud to be Texans, but the inclusion piece is so important. And, and I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but 
you know, we're, we're going to take inclusion to a new level because Houston is the most diverse city in the United States. Um, inclusion is going to include our LGBTQIA friends that we're very involved with at Regions Bank and very proud that a lot of those folks are here with us today. Uh, we're going to take it to a whole new level. One in four citizens in the city of Houston is foreign born, and I don't mean foreign born outside of Texas. I mean, <laughs> I mean foreign born outside of the United States. So if the United States would wake up, and I don't, no political comments, but would wake up and see that we can all work together and we can all be successful together, and we're going to show them that in Houston, Texas, and we show them that every day. So very, very proud of that. Uh, you talked about the program, and I'm going to do that a little bit. I mean, this, this is a transformational program, and it's, it's coming here in Houston for the first time, and, and we're really, really excited about it. This will be a game changer for local business, and it's going to be offered to all business owners. And you said this earlier, but I think it's really important. There is no cost to the business owner, and that's a huge differentiator for this program and outstanding. And we, we've talked about it being inclu inclusive, but also we're going to bring prosperity to these businesses and we're going to continue to advance prosperity in the city of Houston. Regions Bank is committed to creating more inclusive prosperity and we're taking a meaningful step forward in that commitment t today by announcing this opportunity so that local businesses can thrive. I want to recognize a few people, and you've already recognized some of them, but I, I definitely need to recognize them because they're very important to this program, but they're also very good friends of mine, and they're very good friends of Regions Bank. Uh, you, you talked about Gordon Russell. Gordon Russell has been a, a part of the Regions family for over 20 years. Uh, we've worked closely with Gordon. I've known Gordon for the last eight or nine years. And so, Gordon, again, thank you for your sponsorship, but more importantly, thank you for your friendship to Regions Bank. I know this list is long, so bear with me for a minute. There's just some people I just want to point out that are here, and if I leave you out, my apologies. Um, we have uh, Jack Berger with the Houston LGBTQIA Chamber. We have Carl, excuse me, Carrie Broderson, who I met earlier today from GHP, and GHP is an important part of Houston, and we're glad she's here, so thank you, Carrie. Uh, we have Shirley Brooks from the Women's Business Center. And then my friend Shannon Buck. Shannon, stand up. Become very good friends with Shannon and our involvement with Complete Communities. And Shannon heads up the Complete Communities organization. Chris Canetti from the uh, Houston 2026 World Cup bid committee, which we are going to win and be one of the 17 cities that's going to host the World Cup here in 2026. So, Chris, thank you for being here. And thank you for the involvement with the Houston Sports Corp. It's just very, very important to our city. Uh, Sam Golden, Sam, stand up. If you don't know Sam Golden, you need to know Sam Golden. Sam is with Alvarez and Marcel. More importantly, Sam is a great leader in our city and, and does so many things. And Sam, thank you for that. And thank you for your friendship to the bank as well. Very, very important to what goes on in the city of Houston. Abigail Gonzalez with the uh, U.S. Small Business Administration, which is a very, very important part of what we're doing here today and what Regions Bank does every day. So, Abigail, thank you for being here. Uh, Eric Goody, I think I saw Eric. Oh, Eric, Eric with the uh, Houston Urban League. So, Eric, thank you for being here. Uh, Carol Guest with the uh, Greater Houston Black Chamber. Erica Hubbard. Also with the Greater Houston Black Chamber, thank you all. We had a meeting last week, and they are so engaged, so thank you so much. It's so important to what we do here in the city of Houston and our success. Uh, also, Jason Rocha with the Houston LGBTQIA Chamber. And Tammy Wallace with the Houston LGBTQIA Chamber. And again, I said we're going to be the most inclusive cohort ever, and the LGBTQIA community is very important to what we do here in Houston. Also, I, don't, I haven't seen Kennedy Lofton, but he always is late, so maybe he'll be here in a little while. He's with the Montrose Center. We're proud of being associated with the Montrose Center. Bill Dill's over here with the uh, Greater Houston Port Bureau. Bill, thank you for being here. Uh, and then, of course, Judson Robinson. What can we say about Judson? Everybody knows Judson with the Urban League. He, he is the Urban League. So, and I know the mayor gave him a shout out, but we wanted to do the same thing. So. So very proud of that. 
So as I said earlier, inclusion is important, but the other word that we need to use is access, and this program provides very much on the access side. This is about providing access to training, access to experts, access to insights, and over time, asset, uh, excuse me, access to capital and investments. The local small businesses need to compete, they need to grow and thrive, and they need to create more jobs, and capital is the name of the game, as most of us bankers know. So that's, that's what we're talking about as we look at this cohort. We all know that local businesses grow stronger, our entire community grows stronger, there are more jobs available, there are greater economic opportunities, and ultimately there is prosperity that's more accessible to more people. And I think the mayor did a great job of talking about that. Put simply, this is a program that does level the playing field. And you know, ICCC, first time I heard about it was about a year ago, and I think you know, it's, it is just unbelievable what it's gonna bring to the city of Houston. It's an outreach of an, a nonprofit which was founded by Dr. Porter, which was talked about earlier from the Harvard Business School. Very, very excited about the quality of this programming, the quality of what's coming to the city of Houston, and it's gonna make a big difference as we look at shared value. And that's what Regions Bank is all about. And I think it was talked about earlier, but we've worked with ICCC now since 2014, and the bank's been very, very impressed. Thus, we're willing to put our name on it and our money behind it. So thank you, Steve. We observed entrepreneurs who had launched their companies. These weren't startups. They, rather, these are companies that are a few years old or even older than that, but they need a solution. They need something to reignite their growth and help them reach the next level, and that's what ICCC is about. Many of these entrepreneurs are struggling, overwhelmed, even stuck. They need to go from merely surviving to thriving. There are several programs to help startups, and there are other programs to support larger, more established companies, but we find there's a new, unique opportunity to help existing small business owners who are working to achieve long-term success. ICCC is an end-to-end -end solution for these companies. Apple Triple C is designed for businesses in urban or economically underserved communities. It connects business owners with nationally renowned quality training. And due to financial support from Regions Bank and our community partners, which is you, and training that is delivered, I said this earlier, it's tuition free. How many times have you heard of a program that connects local business owners with leading professionals from across the nation? This program does exactly that. The entrepreneurs we're seeking to reach are busy people who don't have the time and in other cases may not have the resources to go back to school and learn strategies about how to run a business. In fact, what we often find is the, uh, these entrepreneurs know everything there is to know about their product or their service, but they may not know how to manage human resources or create marketing campaigns or conduct investor meetings and additional aspects that are essential to helping companies grow. And that's why coaching is so important. A lot of you are gonna be a part of that coaching and we're excited to be a part of that coaching. ICCC provides all of that. The program likes to call itself a mini MBA on steroids and that's right. The key is making it accessible to business owners who need it. Regions Bank involvement with ICCC over the last six years in several major cities has confirmed one thing. This is a program that works. It's a program that's allowed us to reach 600 businesses through ICCC events. And nationally, it's a program that served 3,000 businesses, created 22,000 jobs, and raised 2.2 billion, not million, billion dollars in capital since its creation in 2005. Those are numbers, they're impressive, but what's far more important are the people who have been impacted by the program, the business owners who have taken their companies to the next level, from the training they've received. Also, the associates who have achieved meaningful employment due to the business growth ICCC has generated, and the coaches who have partnered with entrepreneurs to provide valuable peer training and membership, mentorship. Each one of them has been impacted by ICCC. And we're gonna hear from a graduate in just a couple of minutes, and I could not do that service, so I've asked Steve to come up and introduce her. But again, I'll be back at the end, but thank you for coming today, and Steve, come on up, and. We'll move this along. Thank you. I want to take you back 195 years. 
It's Poland. It's around 1825. And the Jucker family decides to go into business and open a bakery. And five generations of the Jucker family baked continuously from about 1825 to 1941. When the Nazis took over, the bakery was shut down, and the family was sent to concentration camps. But miraculously, these three indomitable brothers, one of whom was Bobby's father, in May of 1949, six years to the day after they were liberated, opened a bakery in Houston, Texas, called Three Brothers Bakery. Now three locations, just celebrated their 70th anniversary. Janice and Bobby run this bakery. It is, to me, an extraordinary story of the indomitable human spirit. Janice has been a participant and a graduate of the Inner City Capital Connections Program, as I mentioned earlier, the Goldman Sachs Program, Inner City 100 winner. To make this program come alive, to give you a sense of what a graduate of the program experienced and what it meant to her and to Bobby in terms of growing their business, please welcome Janice Drucker. Okay, well, he just did my whole first part, so I'm not going to do that, but um, I just wanted to let y'all know we have uh, Three Brothers Bakery, and we've been here 70 years, and we have three locations, and uh, we employ now we employ about anywhere from 52 to 60 employees and it was more we've been up to about 80 but with harvey we had to shrink back down and so this journey to be a business person my background is social work and consumer affairs so i i didn't know anything about business and i married my husband the man with all the dough and um, just the wrong kind, that's why I'm standing here talking to you. <laughs> and in 2005, I joined the bakery and became a business person. Well, I always say we, we were, I was just pretending to be a business person because I didn't really, I was really working the counter and doing the schedules and things of that nature. And to be a real business person, you need to understand business. You need to understand financials. You need to understand what is the recipe for success, the HR, the culture, the marketing, all of that. And I didn't know any of that. And so it's been a journey, which um, started with the Goldman Sachs program in 2012. And I remember we had to take a quiz about the financials. And there were 20 people in the cohort. 19 of us flunked, okay? So that tells you the percentage of business owners that don't understand the financial aspect of their business. So we actually had to go to tutoring. And um, I learned a little bit, I will say that. I learned the Goldman Sachs program was transformational and from there they nominated us for the IC100 and that was our first introduction to the program. And it was really transformational. They had Harvard professors teaching cases. I've never been had any teaching like that before. And, and I still remember what they were. They were Dropbox. There was a, a Rolls Royce and BMW case that they went over. I mean, it was a really great way to learn. And um, I remember there was a, a guy there. He started a company called Honest Tea. And I don't know if any of y'all have had their tea. They got bought by Coca-Cola. He had never turned a profit. And I'm like, we're profitable. How come we're not getting bought for multi millions of dollars? <laughs> Coca Cola, okay. And what I've learned through this journey and really the ICIC and ICCC is that the most successful business people understand finance and economics. And I went to then Inner City Capital Connections, this program that Regions is. Uh, so wonderfully sponsoring for us and we had a teacher there named Stephen Rogers he was a Harvard professor and he taught entrepreneurial finance there and he explained it in two hours right and the light bulb went off 
and I became his groupie, and I even went and I bought his book, all right? <laughs> and um, I would love for him to be one of the teachers at this event. I don't know that that's gonna work out timing-wise for him, but he, Steve called him yesterday when I showed him the book, and I got to talk to him on the phone. I'm like, I'm his groupie, you know? I just think he's a rock star. And he even said he wanted to come to Houston and do something in Houston. He even mentioned if he couldn't do the ICCC, then the Urban League Judson was the way to go. So we have to make sure you meet him. And um, so those were very valuable lessons to me. And I've worked so hard to try to learn the financial aspect of business. And now I do. I mean, I understand the P&L, the balance sheet, cash flow. And I give this program credit because we were growing. I had a growth plan with Goldman Sachs, and we were on track, and then we got hit by three floods in less than three years. And so I give this program credit for us actually still being here because I don't think if we didn't understand the finances, I don't think we would have survived. <laughs> And so that now we're going back into growth mode, and we had a great uh, December. Our corporate pie business doubled, and we were going to try to make more stores, which we will eventually, but we decided we're going to focus on this uh, corporate pie business. For all of y'all, if you're looking for your holiday gifts, it's never too early, okay? <laughs> we do custom uh, logoed boxes for you as well. So... Um, and our pecan pie was named the best mail order pecan pie America has to offer by country living. And our king cake is very good too. Okay, <laughs> enough. And then one of the other things about this program is the connections. And so at IC100, uh, it was in Boston. And I remember I was at this reception for alumni because I had already been through some of the programs. And I'm looking at this man, he looks familiar. Well, I had to go to Boston to meet Dave Feldman, all right, from Chevron. And I told Dave, I think we're going to get recertified as a woman-owned business. I still remember this. He goes, you just say the word. So last week, I emailed him. We got certified. And two hours later, he had introduced us to the people that do their food service. And these people do more than just their food service. They do food service for universities and other campuses. And, it, you know, it could be, it's an incredible opportunity. And we're meeting with her today, this afternoon. And all of that came because of this program. So I, I really hope everyone will nominate all the small businesses that you know. We can't afford to get MBAs. We can't afford to go to Harvard. We don't have the, the resources to do that. And small businesses need help. And frankly, most small businesses do not understand the finances. Until we get to that point, we can't really call ourselves a real business person. And so I just want to say thank you so much to Regents Bank, to Chevron, and to especially ICIC and the team there and just for making such a big difference in our lives. My husband, Bobby, he's been, he's, a fifth, he's the fifth generation, my husband, and he's been able to be a part of this. So Goldman Sachs, I went by myself, but all of the things from ICIC and ICCC, we get to do together. And that's really important that all the business owners grow together. So with that, um, Thank you.